Hello everyone and welcome to Edimon. In this particular video, we will cover dark question paper. As second year students have this subject in common with the third year students, let's look into the paper given to your seniors and analyze and practice well for your exam. Myself Suhana Damototi and let's dive into the video. At first, I want all of you to pause the video and have a quick scan of the question paper. As you are well familiar that the first question consists of 7 sub questions and from 2 to 8 questions you are supposed to write any 4 of them. Now, after you have a quick glimpse of the question paper, let's dive into discussion of the shots. The first question asks you the algorithms that requires the backward substitution method. In simple terms, Gaussian elimination and LU decomposition requires the backward substitution. I have given a little bit of elaborative examples uh, for this one. So just pause the video and then refer this text. The next question asks you the difference between worst case and the average case. The worst case generally comes into picture when you consider all the inputs from 1 to n. Whereas average case analysis comes only when you consider few elements from the given range of 1 to n. So I have given the time complexities with an example. So just uh, go through them. Now coming to the next question, it asks you what is a convex hull. Before understanding what is a convex hull, let's look into the convex set. Now if you consider this polygon, which is on your left side, and if you consider any two points inside this polygon and draw a line segment, that line segment lies inside the polygon itself. Such a polygon is said to be a convex set, whereas this one consists of not a convex set polygons. If you consider this polygon, the star-shaped one, and if you take any two points in this polygon and you try to draw a line between them, a line segment between them, and that line, a part of that line actually goes beyond the polygon. So such type of a polygons is not said to be not in a convex thing. Now, what does the convex hull problem asks you? It is nothing but finding the endpoints of a given set, which is a convex set. So now if you consider this diagram, let's uh, just consider only the bunch of points from P1 to P8. Just don't consider these lines at first. So now we need to consider the extreme points in order to find a convex hull. How do you do so? If you take two points P1 and P5 and draw, try to draw a line between P1 and P5, and if all the other points like P1, oh sorry, P3, P7, P6, P8, P2, and P4. All of them are lying to the left side or to the any other one side. Like it can be right or left. It is lying to only the other side. Now these two points, P1 and P5, are said to be the extreme points. Similarly, you can consider two lines like P7 and P6. Uh, so if you consider these two lines, all the other points are lying to the other side. So these two can also be an extreme point. So that's, this is the basic idea of a convex arc. Now let's look into the next question. Significance of Gaussian elimination method. It is also known as a row reduction and this algorithm is used for solving systems of linear equations. And Gaussian elimination is also used for uh, LU decomposition as well as matrix inverse and also in order to find a determinant. I have given a detailed explanation for that one itself. So just pause the video and uh, again read that. Now come to the next question. It asks you recursive algorithm for bank research. You know the basic idea of binary search is to find the element. At first, you will divide the set and then check it with the middlemost element. If it is okay, like if that element is equal to the required search element, for example, it's a K and this one is a middlemost element is M and K and M, if both of them are equal, then you can return the index. If not, you will compare if K is less than M or K is greater than M. So based on those conditions, we'll again find the binary search algorithm. So this is the recursive relation given to that and this is the time complexity. You can just uh, go to the problem statement, solution and analysis. I have even given the algorithm for this one. So just thoroughly go through that. Now come to the next question. It asks you to find the median using the partition based algorithm. Whenever they ask such type of questions, the thing that strikes your mind is the quick sort. You will be using only quick sort in order to do so. I hope you are very familiar with the solving of a quick sort. We will be considering the first element of pivot and i starts from this side and j starts from to the other end. Now, you need to check if there is any i which is greater than the given pivot element and you need to stop there. Similarly, for j, you need to search any element which is lesser than pivot element and then stop it there and swap. I hope you are very familiar with those conditions. So, you will be using such methods and uh, you will be finding the median. Now, Coming to the next question, optimal binary search tree. I hope you guys are very clear with the concept of binary search tree. In that binary search tree, 
the root element is there and then the left subtree consists of all the elements which are lesser than the root and the right subtree consists of all the elements which are greater than the root node. So, now what is an optimal binary search tree? If you are given to find an element in a given binary search tree, the minimum path or the optimal type, the lesser amount of time that is required in order to find that given element. So that kind of a binary tree is said to be an optimal binary search tree. I have given a detailed explanation for this one as well here. And remember this important formula, I have wantedly highlighted that. So whenever you are asked to answer optimal binary search tree, this must strike your mind. Now let's look into the essay answers. The first question asks you algorithmic problem solving. You need to be very thorough with the given flowchart. Once you are done with the flowchart, remembrance or understanding the flowchart, it will be easy for you to elaborate each and every phase. The first one comes as understand the problem. You need to understand like what is the actual problem given, how you need to approach it and everything comes under that phase. And next, you need to decide on few computational means such as exact versus approximate solving. Now what does that mean? For example, you have few algorithms like finding the root of an equation of a quadratic equation or cubic equation which you cannot find exactly. It will be somewhat approximately you will be getting an answer. So those kind of algorithms are called as approximate algorithms. And instead of exact algorithms, there will be a much more usage for approximate algorithms in few conditions. So you need to differentiate which kind of algorithms you are using and also discuss about the data structures, algorithm design technique. Once you're done with that phase, you will be coming into the design and algorithm phase. You mean like what kind of pseudocode we need to build upon, what kind of flowcharts to be done are all discussed under this phase. Now come into proof correctness. You need to check how correctly this algorithm is there. Like you need to find the mathematical induction by doing so. So even if one case is not appropriate for that, the entire algorithm cannot be applied for a given set of solutions. So you need to use mathematical inductions for that kind of problems. And then we analyze the problem. In a sense, we check the time complexity, space complexity, and the simplicity with which we can understand the algorithm. So all of them comes under the analyze the algorithm session. Now come into the code the algorithm. At the, in the final phase, you will be designing the code for everything that needs to be built upon. So understand the flowchart and start elaborating each phase. That comes under the algorithm problem solving steps. Now come into the second question. Asymptotic notations used in algorithmic analysis. As you are very well versed with these kind of notations, I am not going through them. So just uh, see these uh, definition path and then uh, check these conditions. Also consider these graphs which are very important. Start defining each and uh, every notations with an example. For big O, omega and theta notations, start giving a simple definition, graph and then an example. So that's all you need to do. And now coming to basic efficiency classes. Uh, I hope you are uh, very uh, well versed with these kind of uh, notations also. Like for what O of n is used, for what O of log n is used, O of n or n log n or n square, n cube, 2 power n and n, n factorial. All of them are given in the comment section, so just go through them, it will be clear enough for you to understand. Now coming to the next question which asks you traveling salesman problem using exhaustive search algorithm. You are very well versed with this problem, you have learned in DMS, in any other subject also, this is like a basic problem that you are very well versed. Now the traveling salesman problem also uses the Hamiltonian circuit of the graph, I just elaborated a little bit. So just uh, give it a read and then understand all the important terminology that needs to be presented on the question paper. So, I am coming to an example, Kanjo, this example. See, uh, in, in the case of an exhaustive search, you will be considering each and every part. See, for example, in this given graph, you go from A to B to C to D and A. Now, here C and D are getting sparked. See, C and A is there and D and C is there. So, these two are sparked. This is another approach where you can go to A. Now, come into this one. Uh, now, B is getting sparked with C. Similarly, you will be finding each and every root. Like, it's like a brute force you are doing. You are going to each and every path and then finding the optimal from them. So this is called as an exhaustive search algorithm for the traveling salesman problem. I have even given the time complexity, so just uh, give it a quick read for this one also. Now come to the next question, general characteristics of algorithms designed with brute force strategy. Now, the features for brute force strategy are it is intuitive, direct and straightforward. And many problems in our day-to-day -day life are also based upon brute force strategies. Now, discussing about the pros and cons for the brute force algorithm. The pros, 
or it is guaranteed way to find the correct solution by listing all the possible candidate solutions for the problem you need to uh, highlight this word as all the possible candidates we are taking each and every possible way in order to find a brute force now it is a generic method and not limited to any specific domain of problems it is also ideal for solving uh, small and simpler problems it is known for its simplicity because uh, when compared to all the other algorithms this is so simple and straightforward now what are the cons it take a lot of time for you and in the worst case you will be considering all the n elements in factor elements also if possible so it is also a little bit of kind of slow kind of thing and not so constructive now even in the question if you just uh, read the question paper properly uh, they even asked you the sorting algorithms that are used for brute force we have selection sort and then bubble sort just go through the a uh, problem statement uh, for the selection sort and bubble sort algorithm and how you approach it with an example just give it a quick read now come to the next question which asks you divide and conquer approach for finding the closest pair problem see this problem is so basic thing uh, where you will be considering all the set of points and then dividing it in the middle point see i have given the algorithm steps that are required find the middle point in the sorted array we take it as p n by 2 as middle point so once you have draw a line Uh, the zero to n by two elements are on one side, and n by two plus one to n minus one are on the other side. Now, for each and every points present on the left side, and each and every pair of points present on the uh, right side, you will start finding the distance. I hope you are very clear with the distance formula, which is uh, root over x two minus x one whole square plus y two minus y one whole square. I haven't mentioned here, but I I'm sure you guys are well versed with that formula. So, using that formula, we will be finding each and every pair of points distance. now and and then we will be considering the minimum out of it now there may arise a situation where the left side of points and the right side of point one point from left side and one point from the right side may have the least distance so you will be even considering such kind of points so that's what uh, the step is all about and now after finding all of them you will sort it and then you will be finding the minimum of it now coming to the analysis of this one uh, i have given the recurrence relation and the time complexity uh, this is very important when writing any algorithm for that one so just uh, quickly read this one and uh, note down this formula now come to the next question which asks you the fake coin puzzle now fake coin puzzle is all about like you have a bunch of coins where one coin might have weight greater or lesser than the all the other remaining coins now uh you will be dividing that entire set into two parts like uh, n by 2 and n by 2 if you are giving n size of amount of coins n by 2 and n by 2 and then you start weighing them the ones which lay the least will be taken aside and again we will be dividing that set into by 2 and by 2 and then go on recursively until we find the fake coin problem so this is all about the uh steps that are required for this one and um, we are using it as a decrease by conquer algorithm is being approached for this one so there might be a chance where we wish to uh, divide the set of coins into by 3 into sets of 3 so this is where a uh, decrease by factor 3 comes into picture and this will be the time complexity for this one in case of by 2 we take this one as this one so the recurrence relation i have given it as uh, w of n equals to w n by 2 plus 1 where n by 2 is the recurrence type we are the dividing the set into two and then again approaching multiple times until we get the least fake coin So this is what all about the fake coin problem is. Now coming to the topological sorting of a DAG. DAG uh, refers to direct recyclic graph using decrease and conquer algorithm. Now I just want you guys to just uh, look onto this problem so that it will completely cover the concept of topological sorting. You have given some vertices and the natures, and you have drawn the graph. And from this one, you need to um, find the topological sorting using DFS or source removal algorithm i hope you guys are very uh, well known with the source removal algorithm where you check the in degree for each and every vertex the vertex which has the least in degree is removed and all the edges corresponding to the least in degree vertex are also removed so for example c1 has 0 so you just remove c1 so c1 places here and now c2 c3 c4 like you can just go on this c2 then has the least uh, degree least in degree so you just remove that one and the its corresponding edges and that pattern follows like you can have more than one kind of uh, topological ordering so there's no one exact order that is confined to a given problem now come into the depth first search now the depth first search uses the problem search you go from a uh, root node to the least level to its leaf node and then checks for its any siblings present if not you again travels back and then checks for its other siblings so this pattern is followed and you can just uh, go with the dfs traversal stack and uh, you can clearly understand the pop of ordering for this one i want you guys to 
pause the video, note down the problem and solve it and later on check it. If you have any doubts regarding that, please do drop in the comment section. I will be answering it as soon as possible. Now coming to the next question, uh, which is the avial trees. Avial trees is such an easy kind of problem. You, you guys can easily uh, write it whenever it's in the exam. Now, the basics of an avial tree is that it's a binary search tree and it's a balanced tree. Like you have all the trees, uh, all the nodes in a tree in, in a very balanced order such that the height of the left minus height of the right must be in the range of minus 1, 0 or 1. If it is not present, you will go with the rotations. The rotations usually we have are right rotation, left rotation, right right rotation, left left rotation, right left rotation and left right rotation. Just go through all these rotations and then start solving this problem. As per the question paper, you are supposed to construct an ideal tree for this given kind of node. So, I have given the entire structure for this one also. Pause the video, start solving the problem and then get back to the video and check your answers. Coming to the next question which asks max heap. Now, max heap is generally used for priority queue implementations because heaps provide better performance compared to arrays and linked arrays. Priority queue is a queue where each node is having a certain priority assigned to it. So the heap can be of two types again, max heap and min heap. The max heap is uh, referred to as the heap where root node is always having, like the parent node is always having the highest number when compared to its children. See, that's what I've given uh, the entire definition is that heap is a special case of balanced binary tree data structure where the root node key is separated with its children and arranged accordingly such that key of alpha should be greater than or equals to key of beta. Now, see, if you come to this heap, this is a max heap. Why? Because 44 is greater than 42 and 35. If you come to 35, it is greater than 19 and 27. In the similar fashion, if you start checking each and every nodes, parent nodes with its children nodes, you will be getting the parent to be the maximum. So, such a kind of heap is called as a max heap. Now, uh, max heap construction algorithm. How do you do that? And max heap deletion algorithm. I have given the detailed steps for this one. Just go through them. And I want you guys to really try on a max heap for this element. And then after constructing this heap, perform the deletion of the root element. If you guys have any problem, just do ask me in the comment section. So just don't forget uh, forming these heaps uh, because uh, it covers a major topic of your syllabus also. Now coming to the um, next question which asks you hashing. I hope you guys are very well versed with the hashing also. Uh, it is used to uniquely identify a specific object from a group of similar objects. Um, it is used to assign a unique number. You will be using the hash functions for that. In general, notation for a hashing is a modulus functions can be used. And the large keys are converted into small keys by using hash, function, hash functions. And then these values are stored into the hash tables. I have given a detailed explanation. Uh, it might look a little clumsy, but it's so easy for you guys to understand it. So just go through this uh, basic definitions of hashing also. And collision resolution techniques. See, when you are adding the values into a hash table, there might be an occurrence where two different hash values can come under the same index. At that time, that hash table will be having a collision. Now, how do you resolve that collision? We have two techniques like separate chaining and closed hashing or open addressing. In, in the case of open addressing, you will be having linear probing, quadratic probing and double hashing. Go through the, all these three definitions and the methodology of which you solve them. Now, collision resolution with open addressing. I'm only referring to the question asked in the exam, so I'm limiting my um, slides here. But you don't stop, you just go on gather all the other information that is required for this one. So, you know, you are uh, well versed with the collision resolution also using open addressing. How do you do that? So, just give it a read now. And coming to the B trees, uh, B trees is a self balanced search tree in which every node contains multiple keys and has more than two children. See, normally, in case of a balanced search tree or else a normal binary search tree, you'll be having only one root or you'll be having a little number of children. Uh, but each node consists of only one element. Whereas in case of B trees, each node consists of two or three elements depending upon the order. I have given the properties uh, for a B tree of any order M. Uh, and this is a B tree of order 4. See, you can see that this, this node is having three elements. Generally, in a binary search tree, you'll be having only one node in place of this one, but you are having three nodes, three elements in this particular node. And uh, all the construction methodology also, I'm sure you guys are very well versed. So, even try constructing a B tree of order 3 with elements from 1 to 10. And let me know in the comment section. Now, coming to dynamic algorithm approach. 
to the Floyd's algorithm. Now, dynamic algorithm, dynamic programming is generally used when there is an overlapping sub instances. So that is the main idea of using a dynamic programming. The key term is that overlapping sub instances are present. See, for example, if you consider a uh, combinations like n c k, you will be finding it as n minus one c k plus n minus one c k minus one. See, there is an overlapping like. For this, in order to find this term, you'll be considering the other terms also. So, such type of overlapping problems can be solved using dynamic programming. That is the basic approach for this one. Now, using dynamic programming, we can solve the Freud's algorithm. The Freud's algorithm is usually used to find the shortest path in a weighted graph. That's what I have given here. In the optimization problems, white is used in or all the other conditions can be seen from this slide also. Now coming to the Floyd's algorithm. The only condition for Floyd's algorithm is that if dij is greater than dik plus dkj, now if this is satisfied, the value will be filled with this one. If it is no, the value will be filled with this one. I'll just uh, give you an example uh, given in the question paper itself. See, you need to find the Floyd using the Floyd's algorithm. You need to find the minimum path for each and everything. The main condition is that if you are given a six by six or n by n matrix, you will be constructing other n matrices so the main basic is that this is a six by six matrix so you will be finding d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 and d6 matrices now how do you do so d1 considers the first row and the first column from the given matrix see first row and the first column i have dropped down these values now each and every corresponding value must be checked for example see 8 plus 5 is 13 but according to this one it is 0 so the minimum of 0 and 13 is 0 right so you'll be dropping 0 in, in place of it. Similarly, the next one also. 8 plus infinite is infinite. Check the corresponding element in the original matrix. It is infinite. Infinite and infinite, there's no match. So you just write the infinite itself. Now 8 plus 8 is 16. But corresponding element is 6. So the minimum between 16 and 6 will be 6. So 6 will be dropped here. In a similar fashion, you will be filling all the other values. Now coming to D2 matrix, how do you do so? You consider the second row and second column from the D1 matrix, that is the previous matrix, but not the initial matrix. That is the main point you need to consider here. So after finding, writing the values of matrix uh, of D2 in such a way that uh, considering the row 2 and column 2 from the D1 matrix, the similar fashion you will be filling all the other values. You should compare 5 plus 8, which is 13, with this D1 matrix, which is 0. And you will write the 0 because that is minimum between 0 and 13. So in the similar fashion, you'll be doing that in D3 matrix, you'll be considering the third column and third row from D2 matrix, which is the previous matrix. Similar fashion, you'll be constructing D4, D5 and D6, which is the last matrix. That one will be your final matrix. So with this, we are actually done solving the question paper. I hope it is very easy and you guys need to brush up all the topics that are required. Now, an added advantage is that we will be covering the importance that are required. Now, uh, let's look into the importance. Before getting into an exam, just have a quick look at all the required fundamentals of algorithm problem solving with the flowcharts, which is already discussed in the question paper also, orders of growth, asymptotic notations also, basic efficiency classes, mathematical analysis of non-recursive and recursive algorithms. For non-recursive, you will be checking maximum of elements and element uniqueness. Among all the elements, uh, the maximum element you need to check and element uniqueness refers to the presence of only once in a given set of elements. And uh, for recursive algorithms, you will be covering towers of Hanoi and factorial problems. And uh, coming to the brute force, sorting, searching, closest pair and convex hull and exhaustive search. In exhaustive search, you will be covering traveling salesman, knapsack and assignment. And for sorting and searching, you need to understand the problem statement, algorithm with an example. You need to be thorough with those kind of things. Now coming to the master's theorem formulae. Uh, you have three kind of conditions for that one which are used to find the time complexity for various cases. So go through those master theorems formulae also and then come into the merge sort, quick sort, binary search and insertion sort. These are four basic kind of things that you need to be preparing in your DA exam. Uh, it is also useful for all the other competitive exams which you are going to write in future also. So don't miss out the basic concepts with, uh, among all the sorts and searches also. Now also go on to the multiplications of large numbers in Streisand's multiplication. Just look onto the formula and DFS, BFS, topological sorting, uh, know how to draw the graphs, how to um, calculate the orders and everything. And also the significance of Gaussian elimination, it is also discussed in the question paper itself. Heaps and heaps sort we discussed maximum heaps. In Horner rules, uh, which is used to find um, 
solution for a given polynomial function at a given instance. So that is the Horner's rules uh, used for. And then problem reduction examples, you just uh, check all those examples. And then string matching using Horsfull's algorithm and Bouimor algorithm. Uh, go through those also. Uh, learn the methodology. And for Horsfull's algorithm, you have four different case studies. Uh, so just uh, check all of them, and it'll be easy for you. And hashing and B trees how to uh, do hashing for a given hash function and how to construct the B-trees and then come into the Walsh's algorithm and Floyd's algorithm. How do you approach that? For Floyd's algorithm, it is like um, knowing the shortest path between each and every um, point, like for A to B, A to C, A to D, for each and every graph point, you need to find the Floyd's algorithm. And Walsh's algorithm, you used to find the transitive closure for a given uh, matrix. Uh, and now coming to the optimal binding search tree, I have given the basic definition at the for, uh, starting itself, so just go through that one. And principle of optimality also just uh, go through the basic uh, definitions of that. So with this, we are done, all set for your exam. I hope you guys are gonna really perform well the the DA exam and uh, do drop us in the comment section how you wrote your exams and everything. So uh, thank you for uh, listening to this video and do stay tuned to Edimon for further updates. Thank you.